or are we waiting for people to join? Uh, just wait for two to three minutes so that everybody can join. All right, let me know when you want okay. me to start. Sure, sure, yeah. Thank you. Thanks. हम दो जगह से आए हैं हाय रवि हाय मलिक आह या सो यू कैन स्टार्ट दी सेशन नाउ आई थिंक एवरीबॉडी इज इन सो मे बी दे कैन जॉइन लेटर ऑन इफ इफ एनी वन इज लेफ्ट वी कैन स्टार्ट दी सेशन ओके नो प्रॉब्लम 
Thank you. I'm sharing my screen. Please let me know once you're able to see my screen. Oh, yes, it's perfectly fine. Okay, brilliant. So good evening, one and all. Um, thank you so much for joining today's session. My name is Ravi Kumar. I'm representing Gizma University of Applied Sciences. I welcome you all. Greetings from Germany, greetings from Gizma Business School. The picture you see here on the first slide is just not a random picture. It's, uh, it's a picture from, from Berlin, Germany. So this is Brandberg Gate, which is only two kilometers away from our campus in Berlin. And this is one of those many monuments which we have in Germany. So I'm just going to share some of the points which I generally share with students. Um, which you can share with students as well. So the, the, it's very rich in culture and history in Germany. So that's why I've used this picture as well. So it's well uh, accessed, well accessible from the from uh, Berlin campus only. A lot of students would ask you why study in Germany. So that's the that's the that's one question which I'm sure you would be facing. Uh, pretty regularly. So Germany provides uh, excellent job opportunities. Uh, there are large international companies. It is home of uh, world market leaders such as BMW, Bear, Simmons, SAP, etc. It is quality of universities. There's the top German universities which are offering excellent teaching and research, ranking among the best in the world. Students earn an international renowned degree. Uh, so they acquire special knowledge, they acquire international recognized degree. Now, regarding the quality of life, Germany in general is a cosmopolitan and tolerant country. It's a safe country. Students can move around freely day and night. Germany offers economic and political stability, the ideal place to stay and study. And Germany's social security system is one of the best in the world. If a student fall ill in Germany, God forbid, then uh, they'll be cared very well in Germany. And Germany's unemployment rate is one of the lowest in Europe. It's second lowest with 3.4%. And on a lighter note, Germans like football and have most public holidays in Europe. And you can also see a graph here wherein uh, the students going to Germany, international students going to Germany is increasing year by year. So 2020, this was the graph, and I'm sure this is increasing each and every year. And it's the number one non-English speaking country. Reasonable cost of living, uh, typically typical monthly expenses in Berlin and uh, other campuses would be around in total 890 to 990 euros. So it starts with housing 400, 500 euros, health insurance, clothing, cell phone, food. So I've taken a, a higher side figure, it, it can, also come within 600 to 900 euros. And it's very reasonable compared to other places like New York, Tokyo, Hong Kong, Los Angeles. So the kind of cost involved there for living expenses is much higher than, than Germany. I've, I've taken an example of Berlin here, but then overall also regarding other campuses also, it will fall around this, this cost. The career, career opportunities, so they stay another 18 months after graduation and uh, find a full-time job. So student doesn't have an option of, of PSW, which is of 18 months. And it is the same for both undergraduate and postgraduate students. So if a student is going for bachelor's or master's, they will all get an 18 month post-study work visa. One more question you would be facing quite often, uh, public versus private. I know public universities are for free education and uh, there's nothing against them, but it's just a student who needs to make a choice whether they want to study in, in such an environment, such a setup, or they want to study in this setup. So this is a setup of public universities and I'm being very, very brutally honest. So this is how the setup is. There are a number of students there. Of course, this picture was taken pre-COVID uh, times, but once things comes back to normal, I think this is going to repeat. Uh, and there's one faculty member 
and just just imagine how the students will understand the concepts uh, considering these many students in one class and one faculty member as compared to private universities wherein we especially at gizma we try to give individual attention to each and every student for their studies for their career for any of the counseling which they might require in germany so this is one of the biggest comparison which you can share with your students between public and private after germany why i study at gizma so i want to show you first about the potsdam campus it's a new campus it's a new location wherein we have come up with our german university it's called gizma university of applied sciences uh, it's an inspiring new campus of about 3100 square meters uh, there are very good companies around this campus like sap uh, so it's a very high tech campus very good campus and we are going to start our, our first patch on this on this campus in coming september october Gives my at a glance, there are four campuses and together, in fact, sorry, five, uh, we call Berlin and Potsdam as twin cities, which are because we are, they're close to each other. Uh, it's just 20 minutes drive from Berlin to Potsdam and Berlin is the capital city of Germany. Um, then we have Hamburg, wherein Kingston cooperation programs are conducted. We have a London campus in UK, wherein we do corporate training and then Hanover, wherein we are conducting Gizma's language school and university pathway program. So in total, five campuses, 20 odd study programs and 300 odd teachers, because we have faculty from University of Law, Grey Noble, the partner universities, and there are around 750 odd students. And we are catering to a very good diversity in terms of nationality. So there are about 40 plus nations on campus. These are the programs which you're offering from uh, Gizma University uh, in Potsdam. There are a couple of bachelor programs, BSc International Business Management and Data Science, Artificial Intelligence and Digital Business. There's a mandatory entrance exam in this uh, bachelor's degree uh, conducted by the university. In case a student is able to clear this exam, then they get a three years degree. In case they're unable to clear the exam, then we give them a foundation year which could be of six months or 12 months. Moving on, we have master's program in MSc International Business Management, Leadership for Digital Transformation, Data Science, Artificial Intelligence, and International Agribusiness. And of course, there's Global MBA as well. So for Global MBA, we need three years of mandatory work experience. And for other master programs, there is no work experience required whatsoever. So those were the programs of Gizma University, German, uh, German University, and these are the programs of our partner partners, partner degree programs. Uh, partners are uh, these three renowned universities, University of Law, which is more than 100 year old university from UK, Kingston University and other university from UK and Grenoble, again, a very renowned reputed university from France. And they have fantastic range of postgraduate partner programs in marketing, strategy, HR leadership, project, data science. So you would see if you club all the universities together, you would see a good mix, a good diversity of programs which we are offering to students. Comes with the various accreditations. The most important is the AMBA accreditation, which is very rare, uh, which you might not find with many universities. So it kind of assures a candidate they will have quality education. There's AMBA accreditation for a global MBA program. There's triple accreditation for the programs which are offered by University of Law. There's state recognition as well. So if you're, if you're sending a student to Gizma, be rest assured the student is in safe hands. Learning experience and student services, uh, something which we offer to the students. So if you see the difference between 1771 to 2021, this is how this building looked like in 1771. And then the transition happened. And in 2021, you see so many people in the same, it, it's the same place, but then you see so many students, it's actually a library. And there were no students in 1771. There were so many students packed in 2021. 
And now we want to move further with digitization. And uh, we are using Spotify and we want a student to access all the library material um, very, very conveniently. So they have an access to all the case studies, they have an access to all the library material on Spotify. So this is also available, not that this is not available, but again, they also have an option to carry this wherever they're going at whatever time they want to use. And moving on, going going forward, we are, we are trying to digitize as, as much as possible, be that be campus, be that be services we provide, be that be the library content which we are providing to the student. This is another feature which we have added recently. So this is called Gizma Think. This is a distinguished speaker series wherein we invite a lot of corporate uh, professionals or even some people from uh, academia to deliver a session to our students so that we can bridge the gap between academia and industry. And these people do bring their own insights. Uh, they bring the practicality of corporate. And it also helps us have a better connection with the corporates. It, in the corporate sector, we do have a very strong alumni base also because we are more than 20 years old. So we do have a very strong alumni. And then we have very strong connections with, with companies there as well, which eventually helps the students for getting into maybe part-time jobs, full-time jobs, getting projects, getting internships. So all this facility would be available and it's just an assistance. I mean, to be, to be clear, we don't provide any placement service. This is just an assistance which we are providing to the student. So by, by connecting with, with these companies, we, we get professionals as lectures and guest speakers. We uh, try to get some internships for our students. We get live case studies from these companies so that uh, students, our students have a hands-on approach to all, all the cases. It's just like they are solving a case sitting right inside the company. That's the kind of environment which we're trying to give to the students, their projects, their working student relationship, their topics and mentoring for these who are both bachelors and masters. Industry brief subjects, uh, partnerships with known companies like uh, SAP and our representatives give our students practical insights and strategies for various business fields, their real case studies, so that they are, they are better ready for the German job market. We do have a career center wherein we assist students for starting from their CVs, preparing their CVs as per German standards, their cover letters, uh, career counseling, we conduct mock interviews, we connect students with companies and employers. It, it actually increases the employability factor, inspires the next generation of leaders. And some of the students have gone on to work for companies such as uh, Zalando, Uniqlo, Delivery Hero, Wayfair. And uh, a lot of you would be aware of these companies as good established companies in Germany. And our students have gone to companies like this in the past. Very, very important factor of visa service. Uh, visa experts uh, are always there to help or assist the students with their visa documentation, application mock interviews, uh, reviewing issued visa, any immigration regulations or pre-arrival support. And there are a couple more uh, services which we provide, which is uh, uh, the residence permit support, number one, wherein once the student gets the visa from India, they travel to Germany and in Germany, they have to apply for a residence permit, right? And for that residence permit, Gizma can apply on behalf of the student and we will assist them in the entire process of getting a residence permit. In case of married applicants, once the candidate gets the residence permit, then they are, then they can invite his or her spouse on family reunion visa and the candidate can also invite his or her children on a family reunion visa. And there's another service called the PSW. Uh, so once the student completes studies, they have to apply for PSW also, and all, all the assistance would be provided from our side so that there's a smooth transition from study visa to PSW. So we don't have a hostel on campus. 
uh, but we do provide the accommodation service at a very nominal cost. Um, we do provide them accommodation options like a flat or a house shared shared accommodation. They can also have their own personal flat. So it depends on the preference and budget of the candidate. And accordingly, we can suggest them various options. If they know someone in Germany, it always helps. But if they don't have anyone, then I think we are the we are the most reliable source for them for finding an accommodation in Germany. A free beginner German classes. Uh, so we give free classes till A1 level, which is available for all students. Uh, German language is not mandatory at all, but then this gives an added advantage to all the students. Uh, we have all seen in eligibility criteria in, in I think all the countries. So they do mention the eligibility criteria first, and they also mention uh, right at the bottom, preference would be given to so-and-so candidates. Similarly, if the student knows German language, it gives an added advantage to the student. So they should not stop themselves by learning only A1. They can also go up to A2, B1, B2, C1, uh, and it is going to help them in their getting a PR as well in case a student is keen to get a PR in Germany. So that is also possible. But as I mentioned, it is not mandatory, but it gives an advantage to the student if, uh, if they have a knowledge of German language as well. And they stand out to employers who value foreigners who can communicate with their customers easily. That's the admission criteria. I will touch upon uh, this in more detail in the Excel file, but briefly for bachelors, we need IELTS 5.5. Um, for masters, we need six, 6.5 or MBA, we need 6.5. So why we have I've given six or 6.5 because it varies program to program, because as I mentioned, we do have German university, we do have partner universities also. For some, the IELTS requirement is six, for others, there's an IELTS requirement of 6.5. But, but another thing here to note is that we also accept medium of instruction letter, which should be English. So if we have IELTS score, and if it's meeting the criteria, then it's good to go. But if it's not meeting the criteria, then a student have an option to submit a medium of instruction letter, which should be English. Now for bachelors, the duration would be three years, um, provided student clears the entrance exam. If they are unable to clear the entrance exam, we give them a foundation year, which could be of six or 12 months. An MSc program could be of one year, two years, depending on it. If one, it's eligibility, if the student is eligible for one year or two year program. And second, it's also, if the student wants a two year program, a lot of students would be there that I want a two year program because there's a psychological factor that two years will give them more value, which is not the case. Uh, they get the same PSW, we impart the same uh, quality education as well. It's just the choice of the student. One, the eligibility, two, the choice. MBA, we need mandatory three years of work experience. That's the range of fee structure uh, for bachelors. The starting fees is 10,500 euros each year. And for masters, the starting fees is between 15,500 to 21,450. For Grenoble, it's as high as 21,450, but it starts with 15,500. And after this, scholarship would be applicable. Okay, so I've not mentioned the scholarship amount here, but this is the starting tuition fees, and then would be a scholarship. And before I go to questions, uh, I also wanted to show this sheet to you. Is it visible if uh, anyone can confirm me? Is this Excel, Excel sheet visible to you? Okay, so thank you Ramesh for confirming that it's visible. So for uh, German university, as I mentioned, there are two bachelor programs, it's a three-year program. These are the coming intake September, followed by January, April, and July. 
It's in Potsdam. As I mentioned, IELTS or medium of instruction letter. At the moment, we are offering 25% scholarship on each year. So it becomes 7875 euros each year. There's a 2000 euros deposit, which is required as an initial amount. And there's an entrance exam, which I mentioned in the presentation also. With Global MBA, at the moment, we are offering 50% scholarship. It comes down to 11,500. Uh, these are the intakes, September followed by January, April, and July. And we have University of Law programs in MSc. Again, they accept 6.5, 5.5, or they accept MOI. It's always a one-year program. Uh, we have our upcoming intake in October, followed by January and July. We are offering 30% scholarship for October intake. It will be reduced to 20% next year. It can be increased. I'm not sure, but at the moment, it's only 20% from next year onwards. But at the moment for October, it is 30%. So the final fees becomes 10,500. Next year, it'll become 12,000. With the Grenoble and Kingston, it's Kingston, it's a one-year program. There are two intakes only October and February, and it is in Hamburg. Uh, please do make a note of it that uh, they don't have any other option of any other campus. It's only in Hamburg that size requirement or MOI is acceptable. Uh, they are offering 20% scholarship, both Grenoble and Kingston. It has not increased this year. It remained 20% throughout the year. With Grenoble, the, the difference is that it's a two-year program. One year is on campus, and the second year is a final management project. It can be an internship. And then after the completion of academic first year and internship or project second year, they get a PSW of 18 months. Could be one of the reasons why their fee structures is slightly on a higher side as compared to other programs, because they're offering a two-year program and student does get an opportunity to be in Germany for one additional year. And one more thing which I wanted to show is the application process. I hope this uh, is visible to you. So it's a very simple application process. So one, you have to send, you have to fill an application form. If you are sending us an application for German University, which is Gizma Hochschule, you fill this application form. If you are sending us an application for Kingston, then you fill this application form. If you're sending us an application for University of Law, Grenoble, they have an online portal. So you submit an application online and on the last page, you will get a notification that your application has been submitted and you share that screenshot with me. And with this screenshot, you also share all the documents of the candidate. Now, these documents, regardless of which university you're applying for, you need to send me all the documents. It could be of German University, Kingston, Beulah, Grenoble, but you have to send me all the documents. So two step, one, either a PDF form or an online portal, and number two, it's uh, the documents, the screenshot of Yulo and Grenoble and the documents. And I'm back to my PPT for questions. Thank you so much for bearing with me throughout the presentation and I'm open to questions. So Arvind, uh, asks me a question, uh, is 18 months stay back applicable for bachelor student also? Yes, it is the same for both bachelors and masters. Uh, PSW of 18 months is applicable to both undergraduate and postgraduate students. And Joseph raised uh, his hand. Please, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Joseph, you wanted to ask something? All right, maybe you can unmute yourself and come back. Uh, meanwhile, Audrey Priya asking a question about age criteria. So there's no as such age criteria. So a student with an age of 30, 35, 40, and even more than that. And we have seen students getting visa at an age of 40 plus as well. So age is not a barrier. I can share a couple of uh, examples wherein 
two candidates who had an age of 50 plus also got the visa. So age is not a barrier at all. Question from Sylvia Aroda. Thank you. PTE is acceptable. Yes, certainly it is acceptable. You will have to see the equivalency of IELTS of uh, whichever program you're applying for. It could be bachelor's or master's and then equivalent to that PTE would be acceptable. Um, Joseph, uh, I can't hear you because I think you have to unmute yourself. Let me see if I can unmute you. Yes. Now you can talk maybe, unmute yourself. Okay, now... okay, uh, yeah, I can see it now. Yes, uh, please. Good afternoon, thank you for the presentation. I just want to know, um, are we able to have the uh, slide you just um, talk to, uh, to, told us some things about now? And another one is um, uh, over here, the only problem we've always had about Germany is the uh, visa appointment. So I wouldn't know if if um, you have any synergy with the embassy because when you make an um, application, the student secure admission um, the deposit is made, uh, Fintiba account is opened, and the student cannot secure an appointment. It's useless. So we've had uh, such um, experiences in the past, and at the end of the day, the student keep asking uh, Fintiba to return their blocked account money and all that. So it will end up wasting the student uh, time because the one I'm just, I just uh, recited now actually took more than a year, six months before everything was uh, resolved and the money was paid back to him. And at the end of the day, the student uh, ended up not believing in us. So I wouldn't know if uh, you have anything to do on that aspect so that we can all, uh, we can all enjoy it. We always yes, have certainly. inquiries. Yeah, thank you, Joseph. Uh, from which part of the world are you talking from? That's, I'm, I'm talking from Nigeria. Okay, Nigeria. All right, Joseph, uh, thanks for your question. The first one you asked about the presentation, is it? Yes. Okay, so we, we, we do share the presentation. In fact, we have a Gizma library, which we share with the agent join in campus. So maybe you can consult with them and they would be happy to share the information from their side. Secondly, about the visa appointments in Nigeria, surprisingly, uh, it's, a, it's a huge, um, what should I say? It's a, it's a mystery <laughs> that there are no appointments in Nigeria. There are visa appointments available in Kenya. There are visa appointments available in Ghana, but not in Nigeria. And it's very surprising. And trust me, we are trying to get in touch with the concerned people in the German Federation office in Germany. We are also trying to get in touch with the, the German embassy in Nigeria. In case we get any update, we will let you know. But at the moment, it doesn't look very promising. It only shows that we need to wait for 12 months to get a visa appointment. So it might open at any time, we don't know. But at the moment, I don't have much information to share regarding visa appointments. The only update I have is there are no visa appointments, sadly, in Nigeria. Is that right? All right, thank you. Let me go back to the chat box. Right, so. Right, so somebody asked me about accommodation, how it can be arranged through Gizma. So as I mentioned in the presentation also, we do provide a service in finding an accommodation. We do not have a hostel facility on campus, but we can provide an assistance in finding accommodation depending on the preference and budget of the candidate. So there are options available in terms of individual flats. We can give a shared accommodation um, it could be a flat or a house share. So again, it depends on the preference and the budget of the candidate, and we would be happy to assist them. It will come at a nominal cost from Gizma as a service cost. There's another question from, what is the maximum accept acceptable academic gap for both undergraduate and postgraduate program? So there are two kinds of gaps. Uh, I think your name is uh, Aravind. 
right? If I'm not wrong. So there are two kinds of gaps. One is uh, the work experience gap. So if the student completed their bachelor's say in 2015, and after that, the student has been working in the last five years, that is acceptable. Number two is the student was not doing anything. But in that case, it needs to be a justified reason for were there health issues. Was there some other reason, maybe family challenges or anything? If it's justified enough, then it can be considered. Is IELTS needed for visa? So a friend asks uh, that uh, if, if IELTS is needed, IELTS is not mandatory. As I mentioned, medium of instruction can be submitted while submitting the visa file. Um, I'm assuming there are people from different parts of the world in, the, in this call. Then for, for countries outside India, if the native language of the country is English, then IELTS is not required, medium of instruction letter is not required. If the native language of the country is not English, then either IELTS or MOI is acceptable, medium of instruction letter. Okay. Now, Adri Priya asks me, please share your PDF to this email address. Uh, I think you need to get in touch with joining campus team because we do share all the material with them and then they can forward it to you. I have three questions waiting for you in the Q&A sections. Yes, I'm just coming to that. Uh, after how many days does the interview come after applying? So after applying, uh, firstly, it's not certain that the interview will come. Um, so it may or may not come. And secondly, at the moment, we are, we are getting visa results within a month's time. I'm talking about India market. So if the file is submitted, then we are getting the visa decision within a month's time. Not everyone is getting the interview. It depends completely on the embassy, whether they want to take that interview or not. But we don't know the criteria, on what criteria, on what basis they are deciding whether they want to take the interview or not. Uh, for Pete, Ardair, Priya asked me for PG, how much gap will be accepted and for admission, how much per, for admission, how much percentage have in UG? So the admission I mentioned in the Excel file also, it varies program to program. So some uh, programs it is 50%, some programs 60%. So it's like first division. I mean, for, for countries outside India, it could be first division or second division. It varies program to program. There's no generic answer to that. Uh, thank you for your beautiful presentation. We're glad the issue of appointment is sorted out in Nigeria that will help drive students to Germany. Thank you. Thank you so much for all the acknowledgement and appreciation. And I also wish if we can get something, some good news about uh, visa appointments in Nigeria. Now. Thank you so much Ravi asks, for this wonderful presentation. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Thanks for your time. I'm just taking, I'm just uh, going through some more questions if you allow me. Yeah, sure, definitely you can take your time. Yeah. Uh, are all students uh, auto eligible for scholarship or what is the criteria? Prash, very good question. Um, so all the students are actually eligible for scholarship. Uh, there's no such criteria at the moment, uh, at the moment, but it might come up. They, they might come up with the criteria in future. At present, there is no criteria as such. If you send us an application, they get a direct scholarship. Sylvia, I've already answered. PT is certainly acceptable. It should be equivalent to IELTS score. Parash asked me another question. When will students be able to apply for temporary residence? Sorry for asking the immigration question here. Uh, you actually mentioned the right thing here because I'm not here to answer immigration question, but I can just answer to the best of my knowledge. With temporary residence, you might mean residence permit. I'm not sure. So residence permit can be taken after entering Germany, a student can apply and Gizma will assist the student in getting the residence permit, um, which will, the student will get in about two to three months time. And after that, in case of married applicants, a student can also invite his or her family, like spouse and children on family reunion visa, if that's what you meant. Haraj asks another question, entrance test for bachelors will be after reaching the campus or will be online before getting the final offer at Correct. 
So entrance test for bachelors will be before getting the final offer letter. Uh, so it will be a conditional offer letter till the time student doesn't clear the bachelor's exam. And there is only one attempt to the bachelor's entrance exam. So if the student is unable to clear it, we will unfortunately will have to reject the application. Uh, although it's of, of the level of 12th standard students, high school standard students, which is verbal intelligence, logical interpretation, logical reasoning, data interpretation. So students should be able to clear this exam, but very good question. Again, I might uh, mention this in my presentations in future. Uh, Ramesh asked question, can I have list of course and fee structure, Excel file and application checklist? Uh, sure, again, I, I will ask the joining campus team if they can share this Excel sheet which is very, very user-friendly. It has all the details, very understand, easily understandable. And you can, whenever you're sitting in next to the student, just open this Excel file and you will have answer to all the questions. So again, I'll request join campus team uh, if they can share this with their uh, partners as well. Uh, sure, we will do the necessary. Okay, uh, yeah. now a few more questions here. Uh, yeah, does a student can apply for the visa without a blocked account? No, they cannot apply for the visa without a blocked account. They will not even take the file. Uh, the file will not be submitted without the blocked account. It is a mandatory document. Does any other source of funds can be shown? No, blocked account is mandatory, which should, which should be around 10,500 euros. And I'm, I'm not giving you the accurate, num accurate figure, but it's around 10,500 euros. Also, whether the student need to pay one year full fee before the travel. No, it is only the initial deposit which is required of 2000 euros. And after that, whatever is the remaining fees after scholarship, it will be divided into six equal installments, which will start after the start of course. So once the course is started, the remaining tuition fees will start after the start of the program and it will be divided into six installments. Again, very good questions. Uh, how is the visa success rate? Uh, Ardipriya, I'm glad to share that our visa success rate is more than 90%. We are getting um, more than 90% approvals. Uh, it's a good or bad news because we really want to reach 100% mark. So wherein not even a single visa is rejected of Gizma, but at the moment, I'm glad to share it's more than 90%. Is any test applicable for dependent? I could not get that question, Arapia. If you can maybe unmute yourself and ask this question again. Um, if I miss the interview call, what will I do next for interview? I think uh, one, you need to wait for the interview. I mean, firstly, you need to be ready for that interview call all the time. It's like the mobile should be with us all the time. Um, if you miss the interview call, they might make your call again, or you write to the German embassy that you missed the interview call and what will be the next procedure. Um, master students also have to appear for entrance tests, right? No, Parash, uh, the master student doesn't have to appear for any entrance exam. It is only applicable to bachelor students. Wow, I'm glad I've done all the questions. <laughs> and, but I'm happy to address if there are any, any other questions. I would rather prefer uh, a live call. Maybe you can unmute yourself and ask me a question so that we, if we have a more lively call. You can just raise your hand and I will, I will allow you to talk. Or maybe I'll address all the questions. I think Ravi, you are explained so well, they are not having any further doubts. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they've understood everything or they did not understand anything. No, they understood everything, I'm sure for that. <laughs> yes, that's about it, I think, then in that case. No, I don't see any further questions. Can any student go for MSc agribusiness? Yes, they can go for MSc agribusiness. 
Um, just one thing which I wanted to mention here regarding agribusiness or any, any of these niche courses, the problem is if we are unable to meet those enough number of students for that particular intake, we might have to cancel that course. That is the only drawback of such courses. It's a beautiful course. It has very good potential in Germany. But then the only drawback is we don't get enough students for that niche course, then we have to cancel that course and we have to either transfer those students to some other course or uh, cancel their applications and start the refund process. Thank you so much for all the appreciating messages. I really appreciate that. I hope this was useful to all of you. And I'm just a call away. I mean, join in campus can arrange a call with one of their partners, or I can do these sessions quite frequently if this is more, this is helpful to you. But yeah, do let us know in case uh, there are any further queries in future. And thank you so much for being with me through all this presentation. It was lovely, lovely, lovely interacting with all of you. And I wish you all a very good evening. Uh, Himali, anything else from my side? Uh, no, that's it, Ravi. You can just share the presentation to me, so I will pass on to all my associates. Sure. I mean, it's there in the Gizma library. If you want to share that link with all your associates, you can share that. It's Gizma library, wherein they will have an access to the program guide, marketing material, presentation. Okay. All that would be available there. Fine, definitely. We'll get back to you for the same. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ravi. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Have a nice day. You too. Thanks. Bye. Bye.